Good afternoon, this beautiful afternoon. Next week, I'll be laying out the path ahead to continue our fight against COVID-19 to get us to July 4th. This is our target date to get life in America closer to normal and begin to celebrate our independence from the virus together with our friends and our loved ones as we celebrate Independence Day. But before that, I wanted to speak briefly to all of you today about the recent change announced by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. Let me uh, say first, while we still have a long way to go in this fight and a lot of work to do in May and June to get us to July 4th, we've made stunning progress because of all of you, the American people. Cases and deaths are down, down dramatically from where they were when I took office on January 20th and continuing to fall. This is particularly true for a group of Americans that we were most worried about when it came to the virus, senior citizens. When I took office in January, we were losing literally tens of thousands of our seniors each week. Grandparents who were loved so dearly, moms and dads, pillars of every community, gone by the thousands every day. At that time, less than 1% of seniors were fully vaccinated when I took office. Today, in less than 100 days, more than 67%, two-thirds of our seniors are now fully vaccinated. And more than 80% of our seniors have had at least one shot. That effort resulted in a drop of 80% in deaths among American seniors, a 70% drop in hospitalizations. So instead of losing thousands of seniors each day, we're saving thousands of lives and more and more as each day goes by. And by the way, based on reported data, the proportion, the proportion of seniors who've been vaccinated is essentially equal between white and seniors of color. I said from the beginning that we were, we we're going to fight this virus with equity, equity for all. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, there are more Latinos and African-American seniors that have been vaccinated as a percentage than white seniors. These numbers are a sign of progress on that front as well. Now, last week, I announced that we had crossed the threshold of 200 million shots. We've now, since Inauguration Day, we have given 215 million shots. And that uh, anyone 16 years of age or older is now eligible to get the vaccine now, today, immediately. And because of the extraordinary progress we've made in fighting this virus, and the progress our scientists have made in learning about how it gets transmitted. Earlier today, the CDC made an important announcement. Starting today, if you're fully vaccinated and you're outdoors, you need, and not in a big crowd, you no longer need to wear a mask. I want to be absolutely clear. If you're in a crowd, like a stadium or at a conference or a concert, you still need to wear a mask, even if you're outside. But beginning today, gathering with a group of friends in a park, going for a picnic, as long as you are vaccinated and outdoors, you can do it without a mask. The CDC is able to make this announcement because our scientists are convinced by the data that the odds of getting or giving the virus to others is very, very low if you've both been fully vaccinated and out in the open air. The CDC also helped clarify which outdoor activities are safer or less safe, depending on whether you've been vaccinated. The bottom line is clear. If you're vaccinated, you can do more things more safely, both outdoors as well as indoors. For, so for those who haven't gotten their vaccination yet, a 
especially if you're younger or think you don't need it, this is another great reason to go get vaccinated now, now. Yes, the vaccines are about saving your life, but also the lives of the people around you. But they're also about helping you get us get back to closer to normal in our living, more normal living, getting together with friends, going to a, the park for a picnic without needing to mask up. We're back to that place now as long as you get vaccinated. So go get the shot. It's never been easier. And once you're fully vaccinated, you can go without a mask when you're outside and away from big crowds. I want to thank the team at the CDC for everything they're doing to help us lead with science and bring our communities out of this crisis safely and responsibly. And I also want to thank everyone who's gotten the vaccine for doing your patriotic duty and helping us get on the path to Independence Day, which I'll be discussing more in detail next week. In the meantime, I urge all Americans, don't let up now. Keep following the guidance. Go get your vaccination now. It's free and it's convenient. Ninety percent of the American people live within five miles of a site where you can get a vaccination. You can do this, and we will do this. Thank you all, and God bless you. And as much as the temptation is to stay outdoors in this beautiful day, I've got more work to do. Thank you all very, very much. Bye-bye. President, if the risk is so low outdoors, why doesn't it apply to everybody? Wait, would you have any preconditions before meeting with Vladimir Putin? I, uh, one at a time. If the risk is so low outdoors, why doesn't this new guidance apply to everybody? Because the science indicates that the most certain way to make sure it doesn't spread if both people have been vaccinated, the people you're with, and you're outside. And you chose you to wear a mask, sir. You chose to wear a mask. You chose to wear a mask as you walked out here. What message were you sending by wearing a mask outside alone? By watching me take it off and not put it back on till I get inside. Do you have any preconditions before meeting with Vladimir Putin? I'll discuss that all another day. Thank you. What did you ask India Vice President Harris to do? Needs, ask President Nick, uh, will you make it faster to get for them to get the vaccine? The vaccines we will get soon. India, India. they're suffering at what this moment. What do you moment. say to the folks in India? Look, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to just the last question I'll take, and I, I'm really going to be in trouble. With regard to India, I spoke at length with Modi, the Prime Minister. We are sending immediately a whole series of help that he needs, including providing for those rendesivir and other drugs that are able to deal with this and prevent, in some cases, but recover, help recovery. Secondly, we are sending the actual mechanical parts that are needed for the machinery they have to build a vaccine. And that's being done as well. We're also discussing, I've discussed with him, when we'll be able to send actual vaccines to India, which will be my intention to do. The problem is, right now, we have to make sure we have other vaccines, like Novavax and others coming on, probably. And I think we'll be in a position to be able to share, to share vaccines as well as know-how with other countries who are in real need. That's the hope and expectation. And I might add, when we were in a bind at the very beginning, India helped us. Thank you. Sir, what do you do after the